In this video, I will demo a really nice web-based tool called Tinkercad from Autodesk. This is a software which runs in the browser pretty much like MotionGen, but allows you to model and simulate electrical circuits. Now, Tinkercad offers other things as well, like 3D CAD modeling for noises, uh, as well as be able to program microcontrollers like Arduino, which you have in your robot kit. But for this particular video, I'm going to focus just on designing and simulating some basic electrical circuits. So you're going to go to the tinkercad.com in your browser, and then you will sign up if you don't have an account already. Since I already have one, so I'm going to just log in with my personal account. So let me complete that process. Okay, here I am. Um, first thing I want to do is go to the designs and click on the new, and you can see you can do 3D modeling, 3D design, you can create a new circuit, um, and you can also create code blocks. So I'm going to click on the circuit option. And when I get to this screen, you see that you have a little work area available on the left side, and on the right side, you have a little panel where you have a few basic electronic components. So you can see here LED, register, push button, slide switches, and many of these components you'll be using in the next few weeks in this class. Uh, if you click on this particular uh, down arrow, you can see you can also get components related to Arduino as well as Microbit and so on. And there are some complete circuit assemblies also available for you to look at. So we're going to start by putting together perhaps the simplest circuit. Uh, which would be an LED, which is going to be powered by a nine volt battery. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically put together the example circuits that we have covered in the Google Doc. Uh, so let's do that. So I'm going to bring in a power source. So here is a nine volt battery, okay? And since I don't like it lying uh, sideways, I'm going to just rotate it a couple of times to make it vertical. Um, I'll bring an LED. Now you know that this is the long leg, so that's the positive side, the anode, anode, which means that the power should really go through from the positive side of the battery through the anode and should come out of the cathode. We also know that you want to limit the, register, the current in the circuit. So you're going to attach a register in series. So um, I can select this register and I can select the resistance of uh, this. So let's put 330 ohm there, okay. Now I can wire them up. Uh, one thing I don't want to do is like crisscross the wire. So the red is on this side and the positive side is on this side. So I'll select it and flip it. So that way the positive side is here. Now I can make the connection. And notice when I make the connection, you see a little you know, star when the connection is made. That's visual feedback to you that the connection has been made correctly. And since this is the power side, so I'll turn that into a red wire and then connect it to the ground using a black wire. Okay, so the power is going to flow through the LED from the positive side, go through the register, which limits the current in the circuit and come back to the ground. Now at this point, I can start the simulation and I should see the LED light up. Now if you read the description over here, when you hover over the LED, it says the current is 20.9 milliamp, while the recommended maximum is 20 milliamp. Um, it's close to the recommended maximum, so we're not going to worry too much about it right here um, because you only have a 330 ohm register in your robot kit, okay? Now this is fine, um, but problem with this kind of circuit is that you have to solder the wires at the terminals or find a way to attach them and it's not going to be a very robust connection anyways. So we're not going to create circuits like this, okay? So let me just delete everything. I'm going to select all, this, all of these components and show you the preferred way to put these circuits together. And our preferred way is to actually use a breadboard. Now, breadboard has nothing to do with bread, unfortunately, uh, although there is a you know, history behind it, which I will not get into right now. But if you look at a breadboard, it has a bunch of holes, okay? Now, these holes are electrically connected. So, for example, these all of these holes, as I hover over any of these in this particular row, are electrically connected underneath. So, there is a metal strip that runs underneath. So, if you ever want to open a breadboard, you can strip the, the adhesive, self-adhesive self backing at the, uh, of the breadboard, and you can remove that, and you will see that there's a metal strip that runs underneath this. Similarly, there is a metal strip that underneath, runs underneath these as well. And, and this one, which is next to the path design, is generally called the power rail, okay? So what you would do is you would connect the positive 
terminal of the battery via wire into one of these holes and all of these holes would be at the same uh, voltage at that instant okay and similarly you will generally connect the ground wire from the battery here so this would be the ground connection and that way you have a bunch of holes available from where you can power different parts of your circuit okay so if i bring a nine volt battery here and let me just rotate this and i make a connection from the positive to one of these holes and I, I could choose any of these holes over here but i just chose this one okay and then from negative to this one make that to be black the color of the wire does not matter but it's just good practice to keep the the coloring to be consistent you can also double click on the wire anywhere and you can actually put a little bit of a twist in there okay so if you want to nicely route your wire which is always recommended because generally when you start putting the circuits together, you have too many wires and then it becomes difficult to debug your circuit if there is a problem, okay? So at this instant, this particular hole is at nine volt, but then so are the rest of the holes in this row, okay? And this one, if you assume it's at zero voltage, the reference voltage, then all of these holes are also at zero voltage, okay? Now you also see that there's a power rail on the other side and this one is not connected with this one. So conceivably, you could bring another power source, let's say, a 1.5 volt battery and i'll make this to be four batteries because you do have a six volt battery pack and what you can do is you can take the positive connect it here take the negative connect it here and let me just change the color here okay so when you do this you know what maybe i'll move it here okay when you do this you have actually powered this rail with the six volt source and this uh is is basically powered with the nine volt rail okay so you could have different power supplies for different parts of the circuit it's not a problem but generally if these circuits are supposed to be working in tandem together as part of a bigger electronic circuit then you want to make sure that the grounds are connected together okay so you will always do that and, you know let's just make this and that way the grounds are always connected because the reference voltage as you have learned should be same for a single circuit okay now we're not going to worry about the six volt battery packs. I'll delete this, I'll delete this as well, okay? And what we will do is we'll bring our LED, okay? So here's the positive side. So the power has to flow from the positive side of the battery, go into here, and all of these holes, as you can see, are connected. So all the holes in this column are connected, all the holes on this column are connected, but not in any other column over here, okay? And there's a big separation here, so which means that holes in this column are not connected to the holes in this column, okay? And that's why there is a separation over here. This is the positive side, so I'm going to change this to red. Of course, I need a register, and red let me rotate it. And this register is going to be a 330 ohm register, so let me select that. All right, and then connect the ground, and this would be black in color okay so now we expect the current to flow from here to here and these holes are all kind of electrically connected so the power goes through here through the led lights up the led registered to lower the current in the circuit and then the connection to the ground right so start the simulation and you see the led lights up right okay now our next circuit in the module is basically adding a switch so we want the led to turn on when the switch is pressed Otherwise, it should be off, right? Okay, so how can we do that? Well, let me first remove this wire. Everything else remains same, and I'm going to take a switch from here, okay? So I can connect it like this, right, over here. I, I could put it like this as well, move, move, move my register down a little bit, and now you can see the power is going to go through the, through the LED, come down here, go through the register, go through the this leg of the switch, and then come over here, right? Now these two legs, terminal 2A and 1A, uh, as shown over here, are not connected until and unless you press the switch, right? Okay, so let's make a connection from here to the ground to complete the circuit, all right? Now let's start the simulation. You see LED is off, right? Because these two legs are not connected, so there is a big gap, that's infinite resistance. When I press the switch, LED turns on. So I'm just using my left mouse button to cl click on this, and the LED turns on. Okay, now what else can we do? Well, we can definitely add more elements in series. So this is all a series uh, connection. So what if we try to find a photoresistor, okay? Now we can add a photoresistor over here. This is again in series with, with the uh, switch, okay? 
if you can't see, you can you know see here that I've connected with this leg, and then connect complete the connection by going to the ground from here. Okay? Um, and now if I start the simulation, you see the the switch. Well, of course, you know what? We don't need the switch. So let's let's get rid of the switch. We'll just have the register over here. So that means I have to move this over. Okay. Now let's start the simulation. And you see the LED turns on, okay? So now what, what, what is LED actually doing? Well, it's really on, but we can simulate what happens with the photocell. So essentially photocell over here is an element which acts like a variable register and its resistance changes based on how much light is falling on it, right? So more the light that falls on it, less its resistance is, okay? So it's almost like you have two resistance over here and you have an LED and we can shine more light on it to decrease the resistance. So when the resistance is decreased, the current goes up, right? So let's do that. So now we are basically simulating putting more and more light, which decreases the effective resistance in the circuit. And as a result, the LED gets brighter and brighter. But if I go in the other direction and I increase the resistance, then the current is reduced. And as a result, the LED gets dimmer. 